all in on my swag, you ours. At home, never, playoffs on the line. Never wavered the way that no. an Australian I know did. Uh, I will say Hugh Jackman? this, yes. Hugh Jackman Keith has Urban? been very, very in and out. Right, yeah. and Kylie, Kylie, Kylie McNogue would just never yeah. never set on whether she liked the Jaguars she or not. She was benching Travis Etienne, actually, Kylie oh. McNogue. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour one more time live from Las Vegas here at MGM. Guys, we're alive and well. I, Let's do this thing. It's wow. super interesting because <laughs> as you see the opening shot that's coming in, it is a shot of Hakkasan Nightclub, mm. scenes from Hakkasan Nightclub. I would like to thank the good people at the MGM Grand for not using scenes of me <laughs> from Hakkasan Nightclub last night. We would like to thank them for that as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. America, you don't know it yet, but you should also thank the MGM Grand for not using shots of me at Hakkasan last night. Can we just pull night. up quickly that um, you completely butchered the pronunciation of the great Kylie Minogue? You added a second G in there. Did There's I? A little Kylie Minogue. Yeah. Kylie Minogue. Sorry. I don't know. I feel like there was a Kylie it's, Mignogue. That's all right. Maybe. Maybe. I was trying to get at the joke. I was trying to think of obscure Australians. Yeah. And, you know, but that's somebody that you've heard of. Yes. That was my calculation in the moment. Was yeah. who's the funniest Australian I can think of? Mm. So, like I, you know, I had Kate Blanchett up there, not as funny as Kylie Minogue, sure. right? You know, uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth, yeah. you know, Liam Hems Hemsworth also oh, I went to funnier school. than yeah, funnier than Chris Hemsworth, yeah. but not funnier than Kylie Minogue. Yeah. Yahoo Serious. I feel like I've run that one to the ground a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So. So it goes. Uh, right. Anyway. All right, anyway, well, we have I need to, to find out before we you know, get out I need here. to find out who, who invented Vegemite. Who's the person who invented Vegemite? I think it was Hugh Jackman. Probably. All right, let's get into some Roto World headlines. We have a lot to go through, especially in the last 24 hours here, as we have the latest with the Bills Bengals game. The NFL announced last night the Buffalo Cincinnati game will not be resumed. That game will not be resumed. The AFC title game will be played at a neutral site if participating teams played an unequal amount of games and both could have been the number one seed if all clubs had a 17 game regular season. So, guys, there's a lot of different scenarios to get through right here, and we're gonna we're gonna show you all uh, all of them on the screen. Let's start with number one, Buffalo and Kansas City. Uh, both this is the scenarios for the AFC Championship game, of course. Buffalo and Kansas City both win or both tie. Buffalo versus Kansas City Championship game would be at a neutral site, which is gonna be very interesting to watch. No home field advantage for either side. Buffalo and Kansas City both lose, and Baltimore wins or ties. A Buffalo versus Kansas City championship game would be also at a neutral site. Three, Buffalo and Kansas City both lose and Cincinnati wins. A Buffalo or Cincinnati versus Kansas City championship game once again would be at a neutral site. So a lot of different ways that the AFC championship game here, guys, ends up being at a neutral site. Yeah, and to me, the one scenario and solution that hasn't been discussed is the right one and that's just to do nothing i would just given kansas city the one seed have it all be as normal yes it's unfortunate that they were kind of gifted the one seed by a tragedy but at the same time like that's sports like weird stuff happens like teams get lucky they get breaks think of kendall hinton playing quarterback for the denver broncos the new yeah. orleans saints got to play that guy that's not a real game it still counts in the standing so i mean that's what i would have done but i mean i guess this is probably better than other solutions you didn't get a vote and <laughs> yeah I, I mean so that this is what they're going to do and we will know a lot more obviously after the week 18 games uh it's interesting um and we'll get to our roto world headlines here in a second but one of them i think will suggest that it's highly unlikely that the baltimore ravens win uh this weekend Correct. Ruling out number two, option number two. The the other thing that I think is important here is that as a result of this, I my phone has been blowing up with people saying like, okay, now that we know this game is definitely not being replayed, the Bengals-Bills game, what do we do for our fantasy league championship? What is the most equitable thing? And I will tell you that I've heard a zillion different suggestions. I have heard replay in week 18. I have heard, um, I heard one uh, from pro our producer Pete. His league was like the, the, uh, the, winning, they, uh, the winning team had a 60, 40% chance of winning before the weekend per Yahoo. So they declared him the winner and then they split the pot 60, 40. They declared that, that team the winner. I've heard of team leagues where they split the pot and declare both guys, both people, I should say, co-champions, and then they split the pot. I've heard of ones where they, they both teams are co-champions and they donate the entire pot to DeMar Hamlin's charity. 
what I think, and any of those are great, and it all depends on sort of your league and, by the way, how close or far away the score would have been based on potential Bills and Bengals players actually playing a full game. All that said to me, what I think is the solution, sort of what you said, which is that, hey, the NFL, in fantasy football, we keep track of what the NFL says. If the NFL says Tom Brady threw 250 passes for two touchdowns, 250 yards for two touchdowns, that's what you score, right? The fantasy points related to that. And so the fact is what the NFL is saying is that Josh Allen and Joe Burrow and T. Higgins and Jamar Chase and, and you know, Stefan Diggs and so on down the list – didn't score any points. The game did not happen. And so while it's incredibly unfortunate, that's what it is. And to me, that's how you should score it in your fantasy football championship. You think about, uh, you know, you think about Kyler Murray from a couple of weeks ago. He played three plays for Arizona, got basically a zero. T. Higgins played one snap two weeks ago. Was, you know, got re-injured something in, in pregame warm-up. No one knew about it. He literally played one snap. And everyone that had T. Higgins on their team got a zero. It's horrible and it's unfortunate. It was part of a tragedy and it's, again, you know, very low on the list of priorities given everything that happened in that game. But to me, that's the most fair way. It stinks, but yep. that's fantasy football. Sometimes you just get a bad break. Yep, 100%. I think that's the only way to do it. And look, people can do whatever they want. They can come to an agreement. That's fine. But I think if you're going off projected scores, then let's go back to 2007 and give the 16 and 0 Patriots the Super Bowl because they were the best team. They were the best projected team. They just happened to lose. Like, that's just what happens. You have to go off what happened, and what happened here is, is zero as, as determined by the NFL. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a unique situation, right? So it's just going to require everybody in their league to work together, as you said, in whatever scenario uh, is best for your league. Let's get through some more Roto World headlines that are injury related, especially if you are one of those leagues that is playing uh, into week 18, whether you decide to play play because you need the extra week or you're playing two-week championship. There's a lot going on here. So Christian McCaffrey, guys, remained sideline for Thursday's practice with the ankle here. We know, Jay, the 49ers, obviously massive, massive favorites. Could see a little Debo in this game. It's looking like McCaffrey trending, obviously, the wrong way. Yeah, and I think the other thing is that Elijah Mitchell's trending in the right way as well. So now they've got their running backs uh, full stable outside of McCaffrey. And, look, they're 14-point favorites in this game. I'm not sure even that they're that advantaged by the two seed over the three seed because if you drop the three, you play the Giants as opposed to potentially the Packers. So I just think it really matters to risk him. And even if he, even if he does play, they're 14-point favorites, so you wouldn't expect he's going to play in the second half anyway. Yeah, I mean, and by the way, the other thing is is that, so this is a, uh, a tweet from uh, Cam Inman, does a great job covering, uh, covering the uh, 49ers for the San Jose Mercury and the East Bay Times. And so... Cam just basically so said, by the way, Debo Samuel and Elijah Mitchell both expected to play. And on McCaffrey, this is, he's quoting Kyle Shanahan now. Um, I'm sorry, John Lynch. He's quoting John Lynch, their general manager, on McCaffrey. Quote, if he's not right, we won't have him out there. Want him right for playoffs. But if healthy, he'll play. Doesn't say he'll play a full complement of snaps. Just says he might be active. I agree with, your Jay, with you, Jay. Feels like he's not going to play or if he does very limited snaps not something that i would want to count on this weekend another running back guys dealing with injury james connor both the knee and the shin for connor here officially it did not practice for thir uh, in thursday's practice this week so when you're looking at it for this game both sides could be out there starting running backs yeah and i think this is the thing to remember about week 18 is that if guys are getting multiple dmps and the team has nothing to play for then they're not going to play and that's just how it goes they don't need to gut through a meaningless game essentially no they're not so the expectation here would be county ingram would get the majority of work for arizona in you know in a matchup that you know you don't you don't <clears throat> excuse me you don't love the matchup but again the volume of work should mask it so there's we're going to talk later in the show about other guys that you can potentially pick up that we think are going to have big workloads but ingram would be one of them based on the news around connor let's get into the quarterbacks here <laughs> a bit of a, a surprise in the middle of the week joe flacco will start in week 18 against the dolphins dolphins playoff hopes are on the line they've obviously been dealing with their own quarterback carousel it's looking like skylar thompson with backed up by mike glennon before the jets in this game joe flacco with a pretty much entire backup offensive line in front of him, could hurt Garrett Wilson, could hurt what – I mean, he's probably the only Jet you're really investing in at this point. Yeah, I would think so. I don't think I – mean, Tyler Conklin, too. I was going to say, if you're yeah. streaming tight ends, I think Tyler Conklin's in, in the conversation there. But here's the thing about Joe Flacco, better than Zach Wilson. 
Like I, I think if you would normally start Garrett Wilson, you're still starting yeah. Garrett Wilson. I think he is too talented and gets too much of a target share in this offense to ignore him. Yeah. Yesterday, the Jets, or the day prior, the Jets were two and a half point favorites. Now the Dolphins are three point favorites, and it's pushing towards three and a half. That's not just because of Flacco. That's also the offensive line and everything going on. But yeah, it's not a good situation yeah, for the Jets. We know how much the Dolphins have to play for. Yeah, there's no question about that as well. All but right. There you go. Week to, 18 superstar, <laughs> Joe Flacco. To the bigger quarterbacks here, um, Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni said, Sirianni said Jalen Hurts is trending in the right direction for week 18. This line is just an a- absolute mammoth. A two touchdown plus line for the Eagles favored over what Brian Dable won't announce it. He said they'll make that decision Friday night. But, Jay, it looks like it could be Jalen Hurts against the uh, the Giants' backups. Yeah, it's, it's going to be Jalen Hurts. I mean, at this point, everything is trending in that direction. All the commentary has been as such. And the Giants are going to be missing, I mean, probably everyone. They've already ruled out uh, Williams and Ojolari, and there'll be more to come later today. Brian Dable's going to give clarity on that later. But, yeah, I mean, you fire up all your Eagles. They, they need this game to clinch the one seed. Absolutely. All right, let's look at Lamar Jackson here, Barry. Uh, Still sidelined this week during practice with the knee injury. Uh, And the bigger thing here is probably, you know, Tyler Huntley's status as well. The Ravens right now just in complete quarterback flux in in a huge game. Uh, a thousand percent. It's going to be. It looks like it's it's trending towards Anthony Johnson, their straight, third stringer, who has not, in what limited time we've seen him, has not, you know, in, has not been Brock Purdy, uh, you know, as as uh, the new bar for rating third string quarterbacks is. I, yeah, I mean, this doesn't look good, and I, I suppose you still have to start Mark Andrews because he's Mark Andrews and a tight end. Although the truth of the matter is, is for the last six weeks he hasn't even he hasn't been Mark Andrews, quote unquote, but. He's still a tight end that the off, the passing offense, such as it is, will go through him. But he's the only Raven that I think you can feel confident starting here. We talked about Dobbins and Gus Edwards yesterday. We expect much more of a split between those two running backs. Neither of them involved in the passing game here. So, you know, with a third-string quarterback under center, I don't know how many scoring opportunities this team's going to have. Yep, fully expect it will be Anthony Brown at quarterback. Uh, the line has moved from minus. What did I say? Did I say Anthony Johnson? It doesn't I, yeah. really matter, though. Because <laughs> no, it does. It does. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anthony Anthony Brown, thank yeah, you. Yeah, so Anthony Brown, I mean, the line has moved from the Bengals minus 7 to Bengals minus 10, so fully expect that it will be Anthony Brown. And also, Tyler Huntley might be their starting quarterback in the playoffs. Like, we don't have clarity around no. Lamar Jackson, so... The I Lamar Jackson situation is super weird, isn't it, guys? Extre- like, extremely. It's very... You have somebody that is in a contract year that clearly there's a lot of, I don't want to say friction, but they haven't been able to come to anything close to an agreement, and we haven't heard a status update on this injury no. at all from the head coach. No, and I feel like when it originally happened, remember it was like it's probably you know one to three. Yeah, it was one to like, three. It's probably more weeks than days. Like it was just like he probably is not going to play this week. Like it was like there was a chance he was going right to play away. that first week. He's like, eh, but it's probably not. You know, it's probably more weeks than days. But that makes you feel like okay, well he'll be back soon. And here we are heading into week eighteen. He's not going to play, and it doesn't feel like there's any optimism that he will play in the playoffs. I mean, we'll see. You know, a week from now, but. I think the thing is, is there's no optimism and there's no pessimism. There's just nothing. Like we don't no, have it's so no weird. Anything. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's very strange. It's going to be a fascinating offseason for the Ravens uh, with their MVP quarterback. And we know he'll get franchise tagged if they can't come to that agreement. But you have to wonder what that's going to lead to as well. All right. Before we go to break, I want to give the latest update on DeMar Hamlin. The Bills, uh, you know, really good news this morning. Really uplifting news here. DeMar Hamlin FaceTimed into our team meeting today to talk to players and coaches. What he said to the team was, love you, boys. And I know there was some other details that trickled out as well um, that, you know, he he flexed when he came on the screen. Everybody went nuts. This is clearly a Bills team that is galvanized, and this is just awesome to hear. Yeah, just good news across the board. Uh, obviously, it's an incredible story, and, and looks like the Bills, I mean, as much as you can be, looks like they're going to be ready to play football, and that's what they want to do, and that's what Hamlin's father told them to do. And um, yeah, it's an incredible story. It absolutely is. It's it, it feels like sort of the best case scenario given how scary the scene was last Monday night. And by the way, just before we went on air, the Buffalo Bills, from their official Twitter account, announced that they, all of their players will be wearing a number three patch on their uniform this weekend to honor DeMar. Also, by the way, every NFL team, all 32 teams, plan a tribute to DeMar Hamlin this weekend. Really well done by everybody in the NFL, and it's great to see the positive DeMar Hamlin updates continue to roll in. With that, we are going to take our first break. When we're back, we're going through what's on tap. We're looking at key player incentives that could have a fantasy impact in Week 18.
Welcome back. We are live from Las Vegas here at MGM. Fellas, we are trucking along right now. Barry, <laughs> yeah. never sounded better. We got what's never on tap. Never better. Never better. We got what's on tap for you right here. Um, and, you know, our friend of the show, Denny Carter, wrote an awesome article. This kind of inspired this segment. Denny wrote an in-depth breakdown of all this weekend's motivations and incentives. Essentially, what guys have uh, things to play for in their contracts. So you could check out Denny's full breakdown on NBCSportsEdge.com as we get into a couple different players. I really wish, as you see it there on your screen, this, the screenshot of the article itself. There's a picture of me, Jay, and Lawrence from an earlier Fantasy Football Happy Hour show, but I really wish it had just been a picture of whatever Denny wore when he wrote this column. <laughs> Yeah, is it's a shame it, you know, we didn't see Denny and his uh, and his his is, teacher blazer at Hakkasan last night. Would right. have really made the evening. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The, the he would have. No, no, no. If Denny had been at Hakkasan <laughs> last night, he still would have worn like the the sweater, yeah. like the, the Mr. Rogers sweater thing, it's no the, the the robe sweater combo that he likes to rock along oh, with boy. his coffee. But could you see him like at, at, at there's bottle service and table and <laughs> dancers all around, and there's Denny like with his little coffee mug. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. You know, sipping watch, along, w- sipping watching, along to Steve Aoki. Yeah, yeah watching Steve Aoki go crazy and there's like Danny just oh, boy. here, here I thought terrifying uh, <laughs> yeah. and sound as here, well. here I we were, that was him slurping that was Denny slurping that's it's what that like, nose it was, was terrifying was. Yeah, Pro- I understand. and uh, motivated by Denny's article but instead he just caught strays on the <laughs> on the entire happy hour by Matthew Berry <laughs> truly incredible All right, he look. really he really did by the way as long as we're just talking about Roto World employees and like our friends are I I just want to acknowledge so as it's not something because of everything that happened and why it happened, you know, I'm, I don't want to celebrate, but Pat Crane did, in fact, win the $2 million underdog championship because of the results of that Monday night game. He was on our show, as you guys remember, and, you know, he needed basically a low-scoring game in that game for him to walk away with the championship in the Best Ball Mania 3 contest from underdog. And, obviously, because that game did not play... Pat Crane is now a millionaire. I mean, you might see him at Hakkasan a couple a, nights. He's now a multimillionaire. Like, yes. Yeah, we won't be at his table. Yeah. He'll literally be at Steve Aoki's table. No. He actually owns Hakkasan now. Yeah, I didn't think might. you guys – I didn't he tell might. you that. But. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, let's um, look at the notable incentives for the weekend here. Plenty of big ones on the board. Uh, Patrick Mahomes and Justin Jefferson are the two that jump out in terms of records here, guys. Mahomes – needs a monster monster game here uh 430 passing yards would break peyton manning's single season record here's the good news he's got the raiders yeah they've allowed the fourth most passing yards this season as well and five different times mahomes has hit this number where he's had at least 430 passing yards so maybe you know i it, it, andy Reid and patrick mahomes are not like oh i don't know sean peyton and drew Brees breeze back in the day where they're just like hey we're going we're we're blatantly going for records, but if they get close, you could see them going for it a little bit here. Absolutely. And look, I don't think Patrick, he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who'd be obsessed with getting this, but I mean, if it's there, if he's at 393 and there's three minutes left in the game, then why not he, heave one up? Yeah. But I will tell you, while we don't think this, the next player I think is somebody that would actually really try to get this record. Yeah, 100%. So Justin Jefferson needs 194 receiving yards to break Calvin Johnson's record. And you'd normally, for any normal human being, you're like, that's way too much. Not for Justin Jefferson. He's already done it once this year with, uh, we had 220 plus uh, in that loss against the Lions. And then also, this Bears pass defense was already terrible. Now it's super banged up. Jefferson, after what Jair Alexander and the Packers did to him, he's going to be a man on a mission. So I think it's in play. I, I mean, he's been very vocal about saying, like, I think I'm the best wide receiver in the NFL. Well, I, you know, me over Cooper Cup, why not me this year? Week five against this very same Bears defense, 12 for 154. And to your point, the Bears defense, much worse now yeah. than it was in week five. So um, that'll be fun to watch. Justin Jefferson, 194 yards. That's what he needs to break. Calvin Johnson's single season record. So Mahomes and Jefferson have their eyes on records. Other guys have their eyes on some money, incentives related, both for Jacksonville here, Christian Kirk and Zay Jones. This is what it comes down to for Christian Kirk here, guys. 500000 if he gets two receptions, $1 million if he gets 12 receptions, and then for Zay Jones, $250,000 if he gets two receptions, 500000 if he gets 12 receptions. I'm not saying they get a fantasy boost from this because they each just need two catches, but obviously the low bar is, is very much in play. 
the 12 seems like a long shot. Tennessee's allowed double-digit touch uh, receptions to a wide receiver four times this season. Four different times they've given up 10 receptions to a wide receiver. They've allowed the third most receptions per game to wide receivers so far this season. So Kirk, who only needs two receptions to get half a million dollars, think he gets it. I don't know about the 12, to your point, for Zay Jones. But, um, uh, but yeah, 250 k quarter of a mil to Zay Jones if they just get the two catches. So, interesting. We do expect good games from both those guys against – Literally the worst pass defense in the NFL over the last month with the Tennessee Titans. Jay, two here for the Chargers, Gerald Everett and DeAndre Carter. For Gerald Everett right here, 250,000 if he catches five passes. So needs a pretty solid game to hit that mark from the tight end position. And then DeAndre Carter, 500,000 if he gets 55 receiving yards. Another 500,000 if he catches two touchdowns. I don't think they're going to be looking or trying that hard to get him those two touchdowns, but obviously a boost for the receiving yards. Yeah, to me, these are the two most interesting ones. This is the sweet spot, like the Jones and Kirk one, like they do that anyway. And also, yeah. it's a, basically a playoff game, so they're not going to go out of their way to you know be feeding guys for incentives. This game is largely meaningless for the Chargers. Yeah. They can lock into the, to the five or the six seed, but I mean... Those are the type of stat lines where you would force feed them. And then you would see the, the NFL films on the sideline of, oh, yeah, I'm celebrating. Yeah, I just got half a milli. Right. And the other thing is, is that by the time this game plays, it's a very good chance that they will have been locked yes. into the five seed. And it would it, whatever the results of this game is, the Chargers game, it won't matter. So, yes, in a game in which, hey, we, we know we're already the five seed, why don't we just let's go get out. Let's yep. go get some incentives. I, I won't say his name on air. But one of my favorite stories is, this is back in the day in the NBA, a buddy of mine who was a PR director for an NBA team. And he noticed that on the last game of the season that their, their center, who was you know, a good player but sometimes underperforming, he said, yeah, he said to the center of pregame, he goes, hey, I just noticed I was going through some incentive stuff. And, you know, it's probably a long shot, but I just want to let you know, you're seven blocks away <laughs> from a $500,000 bonus. You know, just something, you know, just whatever, last game. He got seven blocks in the first quarter. This guy did. <laughs> wow. Seven, when I, and it ended up, I think, with nine for the game or something like that, but literally got seven blocks in the first quarter. Yep. And they were like, where has this been all year long? Yep. I, I think we'd probably that. be able to piece together who that was based on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Surely not many times have gotten seven little, blocks. little research. Yeah, congratulations to Hassan Whiteside. Oh, man. That is, that's <laughs> unbelievable. All right, let's look through uh, some – some backups to target, especially the games. With that. You can't get over that. It's unreal. It was not Hassan Whiteside. <laughs> so Mr. With, Brightside. With Yo. low motivation here, some backups. Uh, obviously, not the, back, not the backups with low motivation, but in games with low motivation. We're getting yep. through it right now. We're getting through it. Let's start with Keyshawn Vaughn here. Where This would be the assumption that Todd Bowles, despite him saying they have a lot of things they need to work on, Leonard Fournette has dealt with a lot of different injuries this year. Guys, Rashad White could get some rest. Where do you consider Keyshawn Vaughn as, you know, as any streaming potential if you think these guys – or is it DFS situation? Yeah, I mean, I, th I, think, I think a little bit of both. Okay. I mean, you know, it's just one to sort of be aware of. Let's see if, uh, if Fournette or White rest, if we get a preseason report, if we get a, a late Saturday night report or even if one of those guys is inactive, it would be interesting. Like, he's had four career games where he's gotten double-digit touches and he's averaging over 54 yards per game. Uh, and it's a great matchup, obviously, against the Falcons, who have allowed the eighth most rushing yards per game to opposing running backs. Yep, no, I'm, I'm with you there. And I think that, look, the, the Bucks, their season's been such a mess. The offense has been such a mess. Finally got on track a little bit against Carolina. They cannot have injuries derail their no. game against very likely the Cowboys. So I think whatever told, but yeah, all right, fine. He's, they're not going to play their guys throughout the game. Yeah, especially with a veteran offense, too. It's a lot of older players uh, on the skill side of things. All right, so let's look at one, though, that I think could have a bigger impact, but the problem is the matchup. Matt Breida against the Eagles. Saquon Barkley should not even be active in this no, game, no. I think it's safe to say. I think the problem here for Matt Breida would be he's going up against a Philly team that needs to win the game, and that defense is pretty dang good. It, it really is. I mean, so Breida would just be kind of a, a volume-based play. We would expect them to try to run the ball a decent amount. He is a nice pass catcher as well. Again, um, so for me, Breida would just be sort of a, a volume-based flex right in a tough matchup against Philadelphia yep. but would, the positives are is that even if they're down big like he's not coming off the field really yep I think of all the rest candidates who haven't officially been ruled out I would say that Saquon Barkley is literally the shortest favorite to get rested just given his injury history also you can't like protect running backs and just give them you know Daniel Jones might be out there for a series and it's all quick stuff where he's not under pressure but 
Saquon Barkley. Like, he's going to get hit. Yeah, that's what the running running backs yeah, no. get hit. So I don't think he's going to play. But they're fo- I mean, they're fourteen point dogs, so it's going to be it's going to be a grind for Matt Breida. But maybe he gets in the end zone. Like I said, it's a volume based yep. flex play. Back to the Chargers game here, where obviously it's pretty hard to predict because they could know their situation going into the game. Um, but with them. Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly, they could see rest, depending on what the situation leads into the game, which a guy that's been inactive for a large part of the year is Isaiah Spiller, promising rookie running back. But if they go into this game and have to protect Eckler, which they should, Spiller could be active. Especially if they know, by the way, going into the game, that they are locked into the five seed. Nothing to play for. Uh, Right, exactly. So Isaiah Spiller going against the Broncos. Denver allows over 97 rushing yards per game. They give up 4.5 yards per carry. We we would expect, by the way, in that scenario, that they're not only rusting Eckler, but they're probably rusting Justin Herbert. You know, we expect, like, Keenan Allen and, and uh, Mike Williams to – maybe they play a series or two, but for the most part, they're going to be sitting down. So, yeah, Isaiah Spiller, who I loved coming out of Texas A&M, yeah. like a really talented running back, kind of a trendy preseason fl- favorite, got hurt and then was, you know, sort of bypassed on the depth chart by Josh Kelly as the backup to Eckler. But you could see a a healthy run, pardon the pun, for Isaiah Spiller in this one. Good pun there, Matthew. You like that one? Uh, Keep that one in your back pocket for the future, Jay. Learn a thing or two. Unbelievable. Again, I'm I'm Denny Carter at (laughs) Hawks. Denny doesn't deserve this. No, he does. He absolutely does. I think Isaiah Spiller, it is the perfect spot as well because – the game's not going to mean anything. Anthony Brown's not beating Joe Burrow and the Bengals. That would be... I mean, the Bengals are now trending towards... I mean, they're minus 500 uh, money line to beat the Ravens. I suspect that's probably going to close minus 700 uh, once Brown is confirmed. And so, yeah, I mean, you get your talented rookie run in a game that doesn't really mean anything. It's a ideal spot for him. Yeah. And I'll... You know what? I'll just... While we're in this section, I'll just mention one one real quickly that Brian Robinson is not practicing today. Antonio Gibson obviously already on uh, IR. So Jonathan Williams could be uh, in for a big workload against the Dallas Cowboys as Sam Howell takes over under center. Again, another game in which Commander's just playing out the string. Did you get excited yesterday with the eighth seed? I so, did. Yeah, yeah. For a minute there, I was just like, we, we're back we're, in. We're, we, 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 we got a shot in there at breakfast. We looked at each other. Commander's Jets. Jets, yeah. Commander's Jets. We're back alive. Yeah. You know? I was excited for the, the Taylor Heineke, uh, Joe Flacco Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, Connor, Connor tweeted out just when I think I'm out. They yeah. pulled me back <laughs> in. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Exactly. That's how we felt. It was a good breakfast. It was a very uh, good breakfast. All hope was we had, pulled away. We had a hopeful breakfast. Yes. There are some breakfasts, I'm not going to lie, especially here in Vegas, where hope is not the prevailing emotion. No. Um, it's but, not, uh, not yes, the nectar. Y- yes, <laughs> yeah. but yesterday was a hopeful breakfast. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. All right, before the weekend ends, basically, if you're looking to uh, make a bet before the playoff picture is cemented, Jay, kind of want to start with the NFC title odds here, but what are some teams that you'd rather get in now because you think you can predict what's going to happen this weekend and the odds are going to significantly change by the end of Sunday night? Yep. so I don't understand why the Eagles aren't prohibitive favorites to win the <laughs> NFC. I think people are just kind of, because they lost two games with Gardner Minshew, but like, why are the, their odds and the Niners' odds so close when the Eagles, again, are 14-point favorites? And if they win that game, they get the one seed, have to play one less game than San Francisco. And that San Francisco extra game might be against Aaron Rodgers. So I think the Eagles... With I, Brock Purdy. Yes, exactly. And yeah, the, the Niners might be five, five and a half point favorites in that game, but it's still going to be Brock Purdy against Aaron Rodgers in a playoff game. So... I think the Eagles should be more like plus 160. I think they should be the clear favorite. They're going to get healthier. Hurts comes back. Josh Sweat, uh, Chorty Gardner-Johnson. they got guys coming back. Lane Johnson. So I think they're the best team, and they have, they're going to have the one seed. So I, I think they're the team to bet. I would agree with, their, agree with you there, though. I will say I don't mind the Cowboys at plus 500. Sure. Like, I mean, just, again, like, I mean, the Cowboys are good enough, you know, like – Everything would need to break right. I do think they're the third best team. I do think the Niners and Eagles are both better than the Cowboys, but like it wouldn't be crazy to see Dallas in a Super Bowl. No, and also Dallas are going to play, almost certainly going to play Tampa Bay in Tampa week one, and the Cowboys in that game are going to be four, four and a half point favorites. So even though it's on the road, the Cowboys are significantly better than the Bucks. So we took a look at the NFC odds. The AFC odds are obviously a bit in flux right now, so we, we don't have that board. But Jay, even... Not getting away from the odds, who's just a team that you like right now, knowing how the market is ultimately going to settle? So I think the team that is really rising is the Chargers. And if they, they're likely going to get the five seed, they play Jacksonville or Tennessee, Chargers will be favored in that game, even on the road. So I think they're the team to watch. The problem is, is that after that, then you've got to play two of Cincinnati, Buffalo, Kansas City on the road to get to the Super Bowl. That's just too brutal. So again, I find that with 
playoff odds. If you want to back an underdog, just back them game by game on the money line. And it's often better to back the favorite. So I think Kansas City is still the best bet because they have the one seed. I would agree. All right, let's look uh, at the Super Bowl odds now. This is obviously the most difficult to predict compared to the title games here, Jay. But I know there's been one team you've been – since we arrived here, <laughs> yeah. you've been screaming at it. And it's been mo gradually moving. It was not this when we got here. But who are you looking at with the Super Bowl odds board? Yes, so, well, Kansas City Chiefs going out on a limb. I'm going to say Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. I think that if you add up the money lines of what they'll be in each game, and, yes, the neutral site game – does mess with things a little bit, but just having to not play the extra game, having to very likely not have to play Cincinnati in round two, which Buffalo are potentially looking at. And this is all predicated on the Chiefs taking care of business against the Raiders, which I suspect they will. But again, to me, the two best bets, Chiefs, Eagles. I don't agree with the Eagles being longer than the Niners when they're likely going to have to play one less game. All right, Barry, a fun one here. We don't get to do a ton of DFS on this show throughout the season because we're so focused uh, on regular fantasy. But Saturday, slate of games, and I know you have your rankings for the week, and I want to pull those up in just a bit here to show Barry's rankings for DFS, uh, just in general. But who are some key players you're locking in on, some sleepers as we see some guys get a chance to finally play? I'm willing to pay up at, uh, at tight end for Travis Kelsey in this one. Um, $7,900 on DraftKings. Eight or more targets in 13 of the 16 games he has played this season. And, of course, they're playing the Las Vegas Raiders. You know, how about, uh, how about Travis Etienne right there? Three straight games with over 110 scrimmage yards. He's 6,700. Really like him quite a lot. I have him obviously as a top 12 play this week. And if you want to go, if you want to sort of punt quarterback, how about Jared Stidham at 5,400? Kansas City has allowed the third most fantasy points to quarterbacks. They are heavy underdogs in this game. Stidham did look good last week against San Francisco. The expectation here is that he is going to have to throw early and often against Kansas City. Yep. I like stacking the, the Jags wide receivers as well. I just think that Peterson, if he does, I still like ATM because of the touchdown potential, uh, but ATM is probably going to be inefficient in terms of his yards per carry. And that secondary uh, for Tennessee, which Terrible. has been so poor. And Lawrence, the white Lawrence has been playing like a top six, top seven quarterback in the league for been a couple good. of months yeah. at this point. So I think they'll be throwing. Uh, and so guys like Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Evan Engram should benefit. Don't forget, they have the 12 catch incentive, Jay. <laughs> yeah. So one of, them, one of them can do it. <laughs> yeah. It's sitting out there. All right, we are going to take another break. And when we are back, we are looking at our Vegas viewer mailbag. We got your questions on Twitter. Some might even be in person. And we'll answer them after this. Welcome back live from Las Vegas. And this is a fun one, guys. We got the Vegas viewer mailbag. I don't think they're Vegas specific questions, thank God. So the uh, the Hakkasan talk can take a break. But we got plenty of fantasy questions to Barry's Twitter. We're gonna have some live questions. Stop doing that. I just I just like I like I like the idea of then and then Denny going Crippling. to the bottle service waitress asking for a refill of the coffee. You know, <laughs> as Aoki's in the background and everyone's dancing around and everything. Slapping like that. reminds me of uh, Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter <laughs> with the, the nice Chianti. Yeah, it's no good. All right. The anyway. thought of a club waitress brewing coffee in the back is just, <laughs> it's just uh, diabolical. See, I just, no I just, I just like the idea. Of, I like just the idea the of Denny in like the in the um, in the robe in the you know basically the yeah exactly just you know in there and. <laughs> Everyone else is like in, you know, T-shirts and, you know, anyway. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's take the imagery. Poor, poor, poor Denny Carr. <laughs> but I just want to say this one time. He didn't very deserve clear. this. We love Denny. We absolutely love Denny. He does a fantastic – he's a very good fantasy analyst. He does a great job for us at Roto World, and he's a good sport as well. His Wave Wired show is always really fun. So, anyway, we appreciate Denny here. We love Denny. At the happy and hour. His robe. All right. The first question here from Twitter uh, it's, it was to you, Barry. He said, I play in a guillotine league final this week. Oh, boy. Full PPR. I could start four. Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, and A.J. Brown. Who do I sit? Here's the great news. I don't think you can screw this one up. I mean, all these guys are top seven plays, right? So Justin Jefferson, a wide receiver one. Jamar Chase versus Baltimore, wide receiver two. Adams against Kansas City is my number three. 
A.J. Brown is wide receiver five and Stefan Diggs is wide receiver seven for me. But given the fact that it's a guillotine league and what you're talking about in guillotine and you're down to the final, so it's basically it's both floor and upside, I think I would go Jefferson, Chase, Adams, and Stefan Diggs over A.J. Brown. Because of all, all of those guys, the one concern on A.J. Brown is do they just kill the Giants and all of a sudden A.J. Brown, either they're run heavy in the second half or they don't. They sit A.J. Brown in the second half again. They do need to win this game, obviously, and the Giants aren't going to do anything. Um, so A.J. Brown could have three touchdowns by halftime. Um, like I said, I, you have you know five of my top seven plays this week, but I think that's what I would probably do there. Yeah, I'm with you. I think if it was just regular fantasy, I'd probably be benching Stefan Diggs, which sounds ridiculous to say out loud. But against I think the, the Patriots, yeah. Yeah, against the Patriots. And also, Diggs just hasn't been the guy for the past – four weeks or so but I do think in terms of floor he has a higher floor than AJ Brown because yeah it just might be the Miles Sanders show and they're just running the ball all right yeah. our next question so, just depends on yeah I think that's your decision is between Brown and Diggs our, our next question here from Twitter uh, asked how do you feel about Pacheco oh I'm assuming it's over half a touchdown here I believe he hits pay dirt again so Pacheco to get in the end zone I'm curious Jam, uh, what these odds will be set at. We don't have it right at this moment, but do you like Pacheco to score this week? I think so. I think they're going to blow out the Raiders. They're not going to mess around. They need this game for the one seed. I don't believe in the Jared Stidham experience. I think that was a little bit fluky last week, so I think Kansas City will have a healthy share of the ball, and Pacheco will get in the end zone. Hasn't scored as many touchdowns as you'd like this year, Isaiah Pacheco. The, the great Jarek McKinnon has been right. taking them all, but I do think he will get in the end zone this week. And he still has three touchdowns in his last six games, right? Yeah. And so, you know, and scored last week against the Broncos. So I like, yes, in essence, I don't think, I think Pacheco anytime touchdown is a reasonably good bet this week. Any other props that you like this week that are a little bit more, you know, not the, the minus 180 scorer range? Yeah, I think Justin Jefferson is going to break this record. Uh, and I don't think we have odds on that at the moment, but I suspect the odds would be in the range of plus 500 or so. So we might get that market up, actually, and then I think that that might be a bet. I think it's very difficult to price something like that because if he's the thing is, is if he's close, they're going to start feeding him. They're going right. to start manipulating their offense to give him more and more. So it's not the way you normally price a market. So I think that Jefferson could break the record. So, I'll just yeah. say whatever the line is, give me the over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look for alternate receiving yards, yeah. honestly, at that yep. point. Get there it you go. Oh, that's a good call, too. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the next question from Twitter. This one asks, full PPR, need to pick one for a flex play. He's got Algier, Tyler Algier, obviously, Alan Lazard, and Isaiah Pacheco here. So just one out of these three here, Barry. This one was from the great Pablo Sanchez, by the way. Uh, so, you know, it's for me, it's it's Tyler Algier. I, I mean, like, he's been, he's been really good. He's taken over that backfield in Atlanta. Uh, you know, like, we like Lazard against Detroit. That's a win or get in uh, game as well. But just in terms of, uh, you know, volume of touches we know Algier is going to get probably close to 20 touches in this game against Tampa Bay a game that the Buccaneers might be resting a decent amount of starters whereas and then Pacheco we talked about him at Las Vegas but again McKinnon's been the one that's been scoring a lot and they're sort of splitting time so Algier would be my choice here and he's a top 20 running back for you this I week have a, right? I have yeah. a running back 16. Is Tyler Algier, where's he going to go in drafts next season? Because, I mean, he's still, I mean, you suspect they're going to keep him around, obviously. There's not going to be that much competition, we think. I mean, he he'll be, be a, a, he'll be, he'll go in the flex range among running backs here because whether it's Cordero Patterson or somebody else, they'll bring another running back. Sure. Arthur Smith is going to want multiple running backs, kind of and enough. he's just not, it's, it's probably going to be still projected to be a low scoring, low volume offense. But yeah, Algier's kind of an interesting guy. Yeah, he's been going off for a month now. He's looked good, and he's looked good. He's looked the part. Very intriguing player uh, for the long-term future for the Falcons. Our last Twitter question before I'm hearing some rumors. We got some fun in-person questions upcoming here. This last one from Twitter said, Week 17 championship commish dilemma. Barry, this is how we open the show. Lay out a lot of different scenarios. But this one is asking, Team A is up 61 points. Team B has Josh Allen and Dawson Knox. Team A offers to use week 18 Allen and Knox stats instead of 17. Team B thinks it should be a 50-50 split, obviously, of the pot. Barry, what do you do in this scenario? Well, I mean, what I said at the beginning of the show is, honestly, I think Team A wins. Yep. I mean, if it were me, if I were the commish, I would say a Team lot A just, just won. You're up 61. Um, and uh, But, honestly, I think... In this case, given those two things, I think it should 
I think Team A gets to choose. You know what I mean, if, if Team A says, listen, just play Allen and Knox uh, and, you know, we'll use their stats, to me, I think that's, that's more it – gives, it gives Team B a shot, but doesn't just immediately give them 50% of the pot, um, which is what Team B wants. And I just – again, 61 points, that's a lot to get from Dawson Knox – and Josh Allen. You know, the expectation here would be is that Team A really wins that game. Uh, so I think I think that's a very nice thing of Team A, basically use Allen and Knox stats. Because, again, we expect the Bills to be very motivated and have a very good game this Sunday. Yep. I think I'm in the mo- minority here. But to me, if Team A was up three points, Team A still wins. Josh right. Allen gets zeros. Dawson Knox gets zeros. That's just that's the NFL. Those That's that's what happened historically with the NFL records. They got zeros. That's correct. How about Team how about Team B scheming for the 50 50 pots? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, honestly, just, like, like this is unbelievable. kind of an egregious scenario. Come on, Team B. I mean, that, that's what's crazy is that, like, the commissioner easily could have said, like, no, nope, Team A won. I mean, it's awful, it's horrible, et cetera. Yep. But Allen and Knox did not get any points in that week. You lost by 61 points. Team A is the champion. And yet, Team A is like, hey, tell you what, you know what? You want Allen and Knox to play? Here, you can have their stats from week 18. We can count it and see what happens. And you got a shot now. And maybe you can get 62 points from those two guys. Yep. To me, and then Team B's like, no, no, no. I just want 50% of the pot. I have the money. Yep. Yeah. To, to me, it's just the same thing with the Kyler Murray example. Like, people would have bet over passing yards when Kyler Murray tore his ACL. Like, you don't get the money. But, like, that's just what happens. Like, <laughs> people yeah. bet on the under. part of the risk. Yeah, it's just, that's, sure. that's the game. All right, let's get to our in-person question. Really, really excited for this as we are in the sports book at MGM right now. It's been a really fun week here. At the MGM Grand in the Bet MGM sports book. No question about it. Absolutely. It's been a blast. It, there's a difference between Bet MGM and MGM Grand. There's a lot of MGM. <laughs> well, nobody properties. knows Las Vegas like you, as we've learned. <laughs> well, Denny Carter, but that's <laughs> Jesus. it. That's true. I right. love Las Vegas. I Vegas you you do? Yeah. I, it doesn't look like you've had a lot of fun. My, Vegas is my town. <laughs> Every time I've I, seen you when we're out at night, I'm like, somebody cheer Barry up. He's having yeah. the worst time out of anyone here. But what's great is is that I think it's important to mention because I think anyone watching this show could be like, oh, that guy clearly got a lot of sleep last night. <laughs> That's true. That guy, that like, guy clearly. Do you, not mistake you've, him. You've, you've that, guy clearly had a, this that guy clearly had a quiet dinner and went to bed about 8.30 last night. Do you, do you sip thing one more time? <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. It's funny. All yeah. right, let's get to our in-person question. Really excited for yeah, this. Yeah, what do we got? Hey, guys, uh, Jason Feltz, Matthew, thank you uh, for the mediocre fantasy advice I always download, but I never listen. Appreciate that. Uh, so my, my question is about emotionally drafting. So I'm a Packer fan. I'm an Aaron Rodgers super fan, so I always take him in drafts. This year I took him in the third round, which is arguably high, and I didn't do so Not well. Not arguably. I mean, it is. It is high. Yeah. Obviously, he didn't, uh, he didn't three-peat here with MVP. So my question is, where is the line when you want to watch the player you want and you want that player on your team to draft them too high as opposed to just playing the numbers and the percentages? I'm going to tell you something that I don't think uh, people would expect, but from that perspective, I actually have no problem with you drafting Aaron Rodgers that high. Yes, it, it, if you were going by uh, projections and logic and like my rankings, obviously that is too high. But guess what? Fantasy football is a game we play for fun. It is a hobby. And you said you're an Aaron Rodgers super fan, and you want him on your fantasy team, and you know that people in your league probably know that, and they're like, oh, let's snake him and try to take Aaron Rodgers. So I got no issue, man. Like, you want Aaron Rodgers on your team? You want to root for it? Draft him. Who cares? Like, rankings in the beginning of the season, the minute the first game is played, are thrown out. What was Josh Jacobs' rank, you know, uh, ranking at the beginning of the season versus where it would have been, you know, three weeks ago? Absolutely. I mean, like again. So for me, actually, I have no issue with it, and I'm always like, draft the team you want. This is the team you've got to live with and you want to root for, and we're ultimately just doing this for fun anyway. Yep, I 100% agree, and I think that people lose sight. Like the point of fantasy football is not necessarily win your league; it's to like be happy and and enjoy football. And I had a lot of friends um, when I was living in Denver who were like. You know, I just want to I want to draft Russell Wilson because I want to like feel close to my team, and that turned out to be an absolute disaster. <laughs> but at the same time, like, why not? Just do what you want. And to be fair, yeah. for the long run of it, Aaron picking Aaron Rodgers has probably worked out quite well for you. Sure, maybe it caught up this year, but I'm sure you've had a lot of fun fantasy seasons oh, yeah. drafting Aaron Rodgers, winning a lot in your leagues, and enjoying the process of actually watching him play and play that well for your team. Yeah. I got no issue with it, and I got no issue with the the larger overall question of like emotionally drafting. Drafting your favorite player, drafting the stars on your favorite team, throwing out, um, you know, whatever rankings are. Because, honestly, again, rankings are just a loose guideline. And 
think, I mean, again, think about the ranking, the preseason ranking of Amon Ross St. Brown. Think about the preseason ranking of, uh, you know, of Jared Goff, of Geno Smith. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's just, you know, anyway, I appreciate the question. So I, I, I'm taking you off the hook for the Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> uh, the Aaron Rodgers pick. I mean, you've, already, you've already been beat up. You've already had an awful season. So, you know. As an Aaron Rodgers super fan, I have a question for you. Oh, shoot. Where is your confidence level right now for Sunday night football for Green Bay and maybe in the playoffs oh, as well? They're, take, they're taking it down. 100% they're taking it down. What, last two or three years they've lost the NFC Championship but won 12, 13 games per year? This year they've sucked. At parts in, this, in the regular season, they are going to eat it up this week through the playoffs, and I have them as an outside win for the Super Bowl. Well, you're here at the BetMGM Sportsbook. I would absolutely put some money down on that. Uh, you'll get pretty good odds uh, for uh, if you believe they run the table here. I will say, you know, if you remember uh, my friend and former colleague Bill Simmons, you know, nobody believed in us. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers are like the ultimate nobody believed in us team yes. yeah. this year. So. Yep. Well, yep. we're, I think we're, we're rooting for you and uh, rooting for your happiness is what I would say. <laughs> rooting for your happiness. Love the question. Thanks so much for jumping on. The Vegas and Viewer Mailbag, guys. Yeah, and thanks for coming down. Thank you, guys. Check Absolutely. out the show. Appreciate it. All right, speaking of Aaron Rodgers, Sunday night, it's the season finale as the Lions and the Packers battle for a playoff spot in a high-stakes NFC North showdown. Sunday, 7, Eastern on NBC and Peacock. With that, we're going to break. When we're back, it is time for last call, the last call of our Las Vegas trip. We're looking at some long shots for the final week of the regular season. The action never stops at BetMGM. Sign up now using bonus code Barry, and your first wager is risk-free, up to $1,000. Simply download the BetMGM at BetMGM app today or go to BetMGM.com and enter bonus code Barry to make your first wager risk-free, up to $1,000. B-E-R-R-Y. I almost misspelled my own. I almost misspelled my own Last call. Yeah, last call. It's time, fellas. Look at some recent fantasy standouts from Week 17 of the NFL season and this is quite the list guys Braxton Berrios right at the top there we got had a Darwin monster Thompson. game last year but some of these are like really obscure this is the last yes. week of the season you know um, I love uh, UConn legend Jordan Todman of the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> in 2014 putting up 20.8 fantasy points finishing as the fourth best running back in fantasy Remember the uh, the Shark Hendrick West era in Kansas City there, Jay? <laughs> I do it. remember that. Yeah. Mike Tolbert's my favorite one there. Fantastic Madden player, Mike Tolbert. Could yeah. not bring him down. Bit like a bowling ball. Yeah. 2013, Jarrell Jernigan was the number one wide receiver. <laughs> Had just an awesome day, 32.7 fantasy points as well. So, you know, listen, a lot of, a lot of different guys you could think about here. Um, you know, we mentioned Keontae uh, Ingram early in the show, uh, you know, uh, how about uh, Quez Watkins, you know, uh, for the Eagles? But here's my choice. Jonathan Williams of my Washington Commanders. Again, Brian Robinson did not practice today. Um, Antonio Gibson already on IR. It is a meaningless game. I think Jonathan Williams gets massive workload. You'll also see Jared Patterson. But, yeah, give me Jonathan Williams as a Week 18 superstar this week. Okay. I'm going Jordan Mason. I don't think the Niners are going to play McCaffrey that much. I think Eli Mitchell coming back off the injury as well. He's not going to get a heavy workload. I think they're going to be up 30 in this game. Jordan Mason, he breaks when he gets in the end zone a couple of times. Yeah, I'm going to roll with um, Isaiah Spiller here, guys. And the big question is, will the Chargers have anything to play for going into this game? I don't think they will. And I think with that, they are going to rest Austin Eckler. I think even Joshua Kelly might not play a lot. Isaiah Spiller, he hasn't been active a lot this week. I was really high on him in the draft. He was a top five running back for me. It's a good time to get a good look at him. And listen, I think he's rostered in 3% of these yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. The, the goal of this is guys – Fairly rostered in any kind of league. So if Spiller gets a look, I do think he'll flash in that offense. Yep. Yeah, I like the call too. Um, and, you know, by the way, not just that, but if you're playing DFS and you're just looking for, like, this is a very fun week to play DFS because most weeks there's some chalk and then you try to go outside the chalk and mix and match. But this week it's just 
super wacky because again you're going to see like just a lot of names you don't normally see get more run than normal yep and i think it makes sense to skew towards rookies as well like isaiah spiller because this is the time to give these guys some run going into the offseason give them a heavier workload isaiah spiller's not gonna be that involved in the playoffs so i think that no. it's a good it's a good week to give him some burn can yeah. you can you ever remember a week where you had a streamer like one of those guys we showed in week 17 one just a, a truly obscure player that yeah. you were in a pinch and they went completely bonkers for you and you were just laughing about it joe mcknight of your of your new york jets i forget what year it was but there was a week 17 game where joe mcknight just went absolutely bananas had like this amazing game uh for the jets and i remember using him and winning a league thanks to joe mcknight uh by the way, I think probably most important of all the things we've discussed here today, that in 1923, Australian chemist C.P. <laughs> Callister created Vegemite. If you're just wondering about, you know, if you're just wondering about heroes, heroes from the homeland. Yeah. So it wasn't Hugh Jackman. No. Or C. Hassan P. Whiteside. C.P. Callister created Vegemite in 1923. That is, that is according to crack staff researcher Blake Friedman. So yeah. shout out to Blake and shout out to C.P. Call Callister. Who should be celebrated, you know, countrywide in Australia? Connor or Vegemite. Connor was subject to a breakfast with the three of us and a couple others. Where me and Matthew went back and forth, just naming Australians and then discussing. Just, them just for, went on for was, like 35 minutes. It's generally, yeah. good 35 minutes. I learned right. a lot about <laughs> famous Australians. Right. Chat about Ben Mendelsohn and Kate Blanchett. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. My one breakfast. contribution was Tame Impala. Yeah. I really didn't have anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. exactly. We're oh, like, Courtney oh, Barnett. A C D C. Yeah. You know, yes. and like we, yeah, we went through. Like, they're like, oh yeah, that's. Right. We're like, oh yeah, that's uh, that's right. Um, Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban <laughs> yeah. are both the Australian. Keith Urban one was a little shocking to yeah, me. Yeah, we personally. were we were very uh, we were there and and um, now I'm blanking on her name. Who? Uh, Twin Peaks. The 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 Naomi Watts. Now you, now we're like, oh yeah, of course Naomi Watts. Naomi Watts wasn't in Twin Peaks, but that's fine. <laughs> what is she? She was in. She was absolutely she was in not a, in Twin Peaks. No, no, no. Naomi Watts was in. She's in a, Mulholland Drive. That's what similar. it is. Yeah, yeah. I knew, not, I knew she was Twin in. A, Peaks, I knew she was in a David Lynch thing. Yeah, yeah. And so that's that's how my brain works. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. You're, that's what's scary, Jay, yeah. is that we've been together now, you know, for a full football season, and you know, you now understand how t my twisted mind I works. Know, you're and you, sick brain. You were able to get there of how I was able to put. Okay, yes. Unbelievable. Mulholland Drive. Was basically his 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 attempt at doing Twin Peaks again, <laughs> and Naomi Watts was the lead actress in that show. And she was magnificent, in it. great actress. She, Naomi she Watts. is great. We love Naomi yeah. Watts here. Given we're in this Vegas, this is a pro Na Naomi Watts show. Absolutely. Given we're in Vegas, we make a make a bold prediction before we sign off. Maybe not even for yeah. Let's see, cause, sure. And I'm going to start because I've just introduced the concept out of thin air. I think the New York Giants are going to make the NFC title game. I think the New York Giants are going to play the Minnesota Vikings in Week One. I think they get a beat the Minnesota Vikings. People think this is like a cute kind of overachieving team. I think the Giants might just be good. The defense is getting healthier. They've got Wink Martindale calling plays. Uh, Daniel Jones is a good quarterback. Uh, Saquon Barkley, the receivers are really solid. I think the Giants are kind of good. And I think the NFC is terrible. Giants make the title game. They don't make the Super Bowl, but they make the title that game. Is the that is a bold, bold prediction. That yeah. is much better than your normal bold predictions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Patrick Mahomes has a good day. Yeah, so, exactly. so Brian Dable's your, your coach of the year then. No, he's not my coach. <laughs> That's Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, yeah, don't Kyle even Shanahan. say that out loud, Connor. Yeah. You got one for us? Uh, I got two. I got two bold okay. predictions. <laughs> so, number one is just a week 18 bold prediction that Sam Howell bowl, just absolutely balls out for the yeah. Washington Commanders. Sam Howell Love it. balls out. Bowls and, out. Man. And balls out and plays so well that the commanders will be like, oh, no, what do we do? Do we have a quarterback or do we still have to draft one next year? So that's one bold prediction. The, uh, the second bold prediction, as much as we talk about the Green Bay Packers and their home at Lambeau, blah, 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 the Detroit Lions beat the Packers at Lambeau and go to the playoffs. Jason's still standing right there. There you what go. You, I'm sorry. You I'm sorry, Jason. Killing poor Jason. Man, I'm head. sorry. It's a bold prediction. It's a bold prediction. Right. But yeah. Alienating the fan base. I yeah. Like it. Restore like the it. roar, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'm at, well, we're at the MGM Grand, yeah. right? They also have a lion, right? Yeah. Oh wow. It's like a dead dinosaur <laughs> right. pterodactyl it's thing. A bit. It's, like a pter it's like a pterodactyl who's been at Hakkasan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit. That's his move. That yeah. was... Everybody knew at Hakkasan. Oh, that's yeah. Matthew Berry. Right. When they hear the pterodactyl. Exactly. Oh, oh, totally. Uh, totally. Two, two yeah. for me, guys. Uh, I think the Rams upset Seattle this weekend. Okay. I, I really like do. And yeah. I know they took them down to the wire last time, but the spread is not indicating that they believe in the Rams at all. And then the last one, a fun one, I think Mahomes breaks the record. I really think he can go oh. for 440. I, sure. think, I, th I know we talked.
chalked it up that, hey, him and Andy Reid might not care about that stuff, and I agree, but I think Mahomes is just so good, and the Raiders team, they're coming off a big high of a week where they took San Francisco down to the wire. Sorry, Vegas. I think they come crashing back down to life. I think Mahomes goes off and has a real shot to break Peyton Manning's record. Yep, I like it. I, I like uh, I like both those I like both those calls. So, wait, Mahomes, what was the first one again? The Rams upset oh, the, the Rams Seahawks. Upset. What I was going to say there is there's been a lot of rumors out there that Sean McVay, once again, will be a, you know, will have a TV job. And I think it's now my bold prediction is that Sean McVay does leave the Rams to take a TV job with Peacock. And as my co-host <laughs> next year on the Fantasy Football Happy Hour, I was told to go bold. And, you know, right. Amazon, Cross, Cross Amazon. Amazon. Bold to the end so, of Connor and Jay. So, yeah. yeah. No, no. One of you will stay. Oh. <laughs> It'll be one of you, we me, and Sean out. McVay. Yeah. Okay. You guys will fight it out in a death match because we're going to have to do off-season stuff for Peacock. I think we bring in Naomi Watts as the analyst. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Vegas, you've been awesome. Thank you to everyone, the entire crew that produced this for Jake, Jay, and James, and Connor, ah, I'm Matthew. And how did I not get fired? Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.